Good day and welcome. My name is Amarinsk and today I will be doing a quick review of The Magician King by Lev Grossman, which is the second book in the Magician's Trilogy. And of course the follow-up of The Magicians. This book is, it seems almost an ode to The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which is my least favorite Narnia book. And since it, this series feels like a retelling, this obviously feels like a retelling of my least favorite Narnia book, which would explain why until now it is my least favorite The Magician's book. And I have already started in The Magician's Land, which is the third book in this trilogy. And I like it better already than this one. And I'm already 40 pages in. It's, I think, the last one is mostly an ode to the last battle and probably also some hints to the silver chair. Um, but what I liked in this book is we have the Voyage of the Dawn Trotter, which places like... It, it takes place around the voyage to the end of the world on the Dawn Trotter, which is a boat. And something very similar happens in this book. Which I think was really well done. It was really uh, fun to read. I, I liked the twists on the dragons a lot. Like, the dragons were improved so much. And the way the stuff at the end of the world happens also I liked a lot. And I liked the fact that instead of one big wave it was actually a wall. Which is a spoiler but not really because you don't know how they get there. And I liked that the things in the water were different and the things they traveled past were different. But they still had to collect something. In the Voyage of the Dawn Treaders, uh, the travelers with Prince, uh, Prince Caspian, Eugene, Lucy and one of her brothers, I believe, Edmund. And here it was with uh, Quentin and uh, Julia and also two of his other friends. They travel to like the end of the world, but Quentin and Julia, or at, at least Quentin and someone else, I believe it was Julia, they end up back on Earth by accident because they find a key. And in the Chronicles of Narnia, they had to find like seven uh, men that were with Caspian's father when he was really young. And in this book, it were seven keys and it was been, had been tried before. And even the story behind like the man with... Uh, we come across a fairy tale in this book, which tells about a man who was looking for his daughter. And how that daughter was taken away from him, some kind of way like that. And he had to find seven keys to find her back. That was a very good nod to what happened. Uh, what happened in the Chronicles of Narnia in the way that the ways to find the keys were very similar to how those uh, men Caspian's dad had traveled with or had trusted were found and had to be found. And a lot of similar things happened and in the end you get even the backstory and that fairy tale turns out to be real. But I'm not going to tell you more about it. I had some minor problem with this, and this is that Quentin, somewhere near, uh, relatively near the beginning, I don't know which page anymore, he says, sorry, that was my Asperger's flowering up. One, in the whole first book, you get like that Quentin is a little bit socially awkward and depressed, very smart, that kind of stuff, but you never truly get like autism spectrum disorder symptoms. It, it feels like that was uh, put in in this book because he had some kind of weird thing happening. Like the only autism spectrum disorder that totally appears in the books is that he is completely obsessed with like the childhood way of viewing magic and that he still believes magic to be real and also that he is obsessed with the fillery books. For the rest, it doesn't really shine through. And that could also just be a person having an obsession. It doesn't need to be an autism trait. 
And then in his book he says, sorry, that was my Asperger's flaring up. It doesn't flare up, it is always there, you always have the struggles, and I speak from my own experience. So I find that kind of like, why would you write it in that way? That's kind of ignoring the actual struggles that people who have it day to day have. If you say it flares up, it's not irritable bowel syndrome of inflammatory bowel disease. It is actually something that's constantly there, not something that flares up if you stress or like if something happens. I think like people could say it that way but like Quentin does not really come across as an autistic character most of the time so that was just very way like I thought ah that explains some of his behaviors but also like some people are just socially awkward without having autism and just like the word artistically was used as an ad uh, adjective in book one it felt a little bit like it was written in to explain some strange behavior to the readers when it was completely not needed like some people are just socially awkward a little bit strange especially very smart depressed and sad people they don't always act in a way you expect the person to act that's not strange that's not autistic like if you are very smart you are not always like other people in your behavior some people just don't care that much it felt it, it felt just strange to me. But except like that, I still like the writing. I like the way the characters were portrayed. I found the reactions to what happened in book one very genuine. And my heart was broken for Quentin at the end. It was so sad. I genuinely believe the way that Love Grossman uh, gave a twist to the ending of uh, no, what you see in the Voyage of the Dawn trailer with like to the end of the world uh, see what happens like the twist he gave to it for Quentin and like all the other characters it was so heart-wrenching so sad and so much better than the original Voyage of the Dawn trailer which like even the voyage was done better in the Voyage of the Dawn Trader, they find like a dead character turned into gold or something. Like, that part, the reference to that in this book is so much better and slightly weirder. I liked it a lot. I liked the way he did it. But it's still... I think it will never be my favorite. I guess this one will probably stay my favorite even after the third book. Because... It's a little bit like if you get into the Chronicles of Narnia, the first movie they made was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. That is still my favorite part of the story. Maybe with like the second half of the magician's nephew, when they have finally traveled to the other worlds and come across Narnia, which is still empty and formed like that part with the buttons and the pools and that strange witch figure. That is one of my favorite parts like at the end of The Magician's Nephew and that is what this book felt like like the end of The Magician's Nephew was outside of the creating of Narnia but like traveling to the other world the way they did it combined with like the, st the stuff that happens in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe it was done so well including the magic school part that I truly loved and enjoyed this and this was just a follow-up which it felt like if it hadn't been there there would have been a part of the story missing and I realize I haven't mentioned the in-between story of the horse and his boy in the Chronicles of Narnia there is references to that in this book but it's like very subtle very 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 minor and like it's also like a story that actually takes place be uh, in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, like between the ending of the battle and the actual ending of the book, something like that. Uh, whatever. It was put in there very subtly, and then this is a retelling of one book. And I'm very curious how the story is going to end because after seeing this fat's incredibly sad, heartbreaking ending for Quentin in this book. 
which make me so sad. I'm very curious about what he is going to do with the ending of the final battle of the Chronicles of Narnia, because I thought that it was a very good, like, philosophical ending that made you think about classical philosophy, but also about, like, life and all that kind of stuff, what's real, what isn't. I'm very curious what Love Grossman has done with that, because it feels like the ending of this promises a very, very, very good ending of the trilogy. So, let's see what happens. This is it for now. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, do whatever you want to, come back if you want to, comment if you have something to say about the book. This is it for now. Thank you for watching and on to the